What's going on guys, it's Red Bull Tanker and welcome to a series of videos that I'm going to do um, detailing <clears throat> detailing um, the rules and everything for, op for the game Operation Unthinkable. Um, I've now played this game about three times and I think I have a decent grasp on the bare, bare bones rules. There are some advanced rules that I still haven't really gotten down to yet but Hopefully one day I'll get to it. But so this will just sort of be a a introductory video to the game. And then there'll be some subsequent videos regarding other aspects of the game. So first and foremost, so the game Operation Unthinkable is based on the wacky idea that Winston Churchill had about the Allies invading Eastern Europe at the end of World War II to liberate Eastern Europe from the Soviets because Churchill feared that the Soviets would not actually hold democratic elections in the Eastern territories and turn them into satellite states for the Soviets, which if anyone familiar with the history of the Cold War is exactly what happened. So the game is supposed to take place, start, uh, is supposed to start in July of 1945 <clears throat> and each turn represents one month and basically uh, the base game only lasts 12 turns or 12 months in which the in which both sides have to obtain the objectives put forth to them in the rules so what are those objectives so, for the Allies, by the, this is where kind of the rules seem a little bit strange because the rules do say each side ha, ha, they each side has twelve months to achieve one of the following conditions. If one of the conditions has not been satisfied by the end of the twelfth month, the war may continue, or the war may be continued for six more turns, or until, or in. Well, yeah, the war can continue another six months using these same victory conditions. So, conditions. So, for the ally, for the first condition for the Allies to achieve victory is to liberate all of Germany, all of Poland, all of the Balkan states, and all the Baltic states. The Allied minor objective for winning the game is to liberate Germany... Poland and the Balkans. That's their minor. For the Soviets, their major objective is to eject the Allies from continental Europe. So that includes all of Scandinavia, Western Europe and Italy, well, Western Europe, Italy, Greece, Spain, and Portugal. As what as I am seeing it. Because no matter what. By the time, if the Soviets get powerful enough where they're coming into France, they're basically bringing Spain, Turkey, and then Finland and Sweden into the game as well. Although, actually, I suppose you'd have to... Well... I guess, I don't know. I oh, I guess you could count Turkey as part of the European continent as well. So, yeah, so you'd have to... The Soviets have to clear out Scandinavia... Turkey, Greece, Italy, Western Europe, Spain, and Portugal. And then the minor objective is that basically the Soviets maintain their current maintain the current line that they start out with. So as long as they maintain that by the 12th turn, they can still win. So those are the objectives for the game. So now we'll kind of go into what a turn consists of. So, like any war game, whether it's the Global War Games or it's Axis and Allies, <coughs> pardon me. So, it is a little bit different. So turn, so at the beginning of the turn, you come over to the timeline calendar and you see if there is an event for the month that your turn has started. So as you can see here, turn one, there is something that happened. So this is the beginning. So 
At the beginning of turn one, the timeline event has you roll one d6. If you get a one or a three, if you get a three or less, the allies achieve total uh, strategic surprise, which then reduces the U the Russians' offensive and defensive abilities by one. <clears throat> so infantry will hit on a one on the defense. Artillery will hit on a two on the defense. Artillery will hit on a two on the offense. That sort of thing. And not only that, it it gives the allies the initiative, which means they get to go first um, when it comes to combats and non-combats for the first three turns of the game. On turn two, though, the Soviets only lose a minus one for all their units on the offense, but not the defense. And then I'll get into this later, but um, in turn two, the Soviets will also be able to scramble from air bases on turn two and they don't lose and they won't lose any of their abilities if the allies roll a four or six they only achieve a tactical surprise and it's only for one turn that the al the soviets have a minus one on offense and defense so then after you do the timeline event you do your random event which is this chart here so for the first six turns, you do the top row. Uh, and then the second six turns, you do the second row. If you ever have a repeat number, you roll again. However, say you're down here and you roll the seven, then you roll the seven again. But the seven up here is open, then this one activates. But if this one is also closed off, then you re-roll again. Or, well, sorry, no. Yeah, yep, that's how that goes. So then after the random event, both sides do their purchases and repairs. So if there's any damage on facilities, they get repaired. Uh, any um, battleships and aircraft carriers are repaired for free. Um, facilities, you just pay off the damages. And then after uh, purchase and repairs, then you do what is called the initiative roll, which is basically you'll take two d6s one for the allies and one for the soviets and you roll whoever gets the highest number gets to go first except if you're still except if you're still in this section once you get once you determine uh, you know after turn one when you determine how long the allies have initiative for once that's over then you start rolling initiative for everybody else so then once you determine who rolls initiative then you go into the combat moves which is you know, just like every other game, you determine where you're going to attack, with what, and then you roll out those attacks. And then, your team, after the attacks are done, you do your non-combats. Which is moving the units that, ha which is moving aircraft back to their bases, uh, moving units around and such. And within those, you have two different types of movements as well. You have strategic rail movement and strategic uh, sea movement. So for strategic rail... You can take, say you could take an allied unit from Normandy and you can strategically rail them from Normandy to Northern Italy or to Munich or wherever. However, and then that's the same with the Soviets. You can rail from one all the way over. You could like rail a unit from Moscow all the way to Berlin. Now for the allies, you can only rail four units a turn and the Soviets, you can rail seven. Strategic uh, sea movement is only for the Allies in which you can take a unit from one naval base and bring them all the way over to another naval base. And the Allies can do that with four, unit, with four units as well. So then once the winner of the initiative does their combat and non-combats, then the other side does their combat and non-combats. Then, once that is all done and everything is set, both sides will deploy their forces into the factories that they wish, and then they collect income. So in some cases, it's actually better if you lose the initiative because if your enemy attacks you, but you have a chance to counterattack, you'll regain the IPC before the enemy even gets to collect it. So that is, and then, yeah, and then that's it. Then you collect your income, 
and then you go on to the next turn and you repeat the same thing over again. Now, some considerations, especially as the Soviets, as you are making your moves, is this NATO chart, which details how certain countries will be able to join NATO. Now, on the timeline event, you can see that some of the nations on here will join NATO on a specific turn. So like Turkey joins on turn eight, uh, Spain joins on turn 11. However, if the, so uh, I'm sorry for the glare guys, I'm trying my best to avoid the glare. So um, as you can see, there are certain things that the Soviets can do and even the ally or that the Soviets can do to bring Turkey in before turn eight. Same with Spain, Sweden, and Finland. So the Russians have to be very careful with how they play the game because you don't want to bring in some of these you don't want to bring in some of these countries early, especially Sweden, because Sweden doesn't come in on the timeline. Sweden can stay neutral the entire game if the Soviets can kind of play it right. But honestly, with some of the stuff you can see, it's um Sweden will automatically join before the Soviets can um complete their um complete their major objective so that's just something that the soviets are going to have to um try and plan around to maybe it being that sweden is one of the last nations that they bring into the fight um so yeah that is basically sort of an introduction overview of operation unthinkable and for the next video we'll go into the different uh we'll go into the rules for the three facilities your industrial complexes your air bases and your naval bases so until then guys as always we'll see you for the next video so until then as always take care